Welcome, dear followers and non-Arabic speakers, to the MT channel. In this series of videos, I will explain the labor law and all its provisions in English in order to help all non-Arabic speaking workers and employers understand the labor law and protect their interests. These videos will be posted every Friday of every week. I hope you enjoy watching this video. Let's start now. Labor Law Chapter 2 General Provisions The provisions of Articles 12, 13, and 14 were amended. They were redrafted after the amendment of their provisions to be in two articles by Royal Decree No. M-46, dated May 6, 1436 A.H., as follows. Article 12 1. The Ministry shall establish a uniform model, or more, of the regulation of work, to be comprehensive of labor regulations and related provisions, including provisions on features and provisions for offenses and disciplinary sanctions. 2. The Ministry shall establish regulations and mechanisms for the adoption of the regulations governing the organization of work. Article 13. 1. Every employer shall prepare a regulation to regulate the work in his establishment according to the form prepared by the Ministry. The Minister may exempt from this. 2. The employer may include additional conditions and provisions in the regulation in a way that does not conflict with the provisions of this law and its regulations and the decisions issued in implementation thereof. 3. The employer shall announce the regulation of the work and any amendment that occurs in a visible place in the establishment or any other means to ensure the knowledge of those subject to its provisions. Article 15. Upon commencement of employment in any establishment, the employer shall inform the competent labor office in writing of the following data. 1. The name, type, and status of the facility, the address to which the correspondence is addressed, and any information that may facilitate contact with the facility. 2. The economic activity licensed to practice with the commercial registration number or license and its date, the point of issue, and attach a copy of it. 3. Number of workers to be employed in the establishment. 4. Name of the manager of the responsible establishment. 5. Any other data requested by the ministry. Article 16. 1. If the employer is unable to run the business himself, he shall appoint an official who represents him in the workplace. If the employer is unable to run the business in person, he shall designate a representative at the workplace. In case of multiple partners or managers in the firm, one of them, from among those residing at the place of work, shall be nominated to represent the employer and be liable for any violation of the provisions of this law. 2. The employer shall notify the competent labor office in writing of the name of the partner or manager, and, in case of his replacement, he shall notify the labor office of the name of the new partner or manager within seven days at most of the date of the latter's assuming the job. 3. In case no manager is appointed to be in charge of the firm, or if the appointed manager does not assume his duties, then the person who actually runs the firm or the employer himself shall be considered the manager in charge of the firm. In all cases, the employer is ultimately liable. Article 17. The employer shall keep in the workplace records, statements, and files that determine their identity and the data to be included in the regulation. It shall place in a visible place on the work site a schedule of work schedules, rest periods, weekly rest day, and start and end dates of each shift in case of rotation. Article 18. If the ownership of the establishment is transferred to a new owner, or its regular form is changed by consolidation, fragmentation, or otherwise, the contracts of employment remain in force in both cases and the service is continuous. As for the rights of workers arising from the period prior to such change of wages, end-of-service benefits assumed on the date of transfer of ownership or other rights, the successor and predecessor shall be jointly liable. In the event that the individual enterprises for any reason agreed to transfer responsibility, all the rights of the former workers shall be transferred to the new owner with the written consent of the worker. If the employee does not agree to the request, he may terminate his contract and receive his dues from the predecessor. Article 19. Amounts owed to the worker or his heirs under this system are considered as priority first-class debts, and the worker and his heirs in order to settle them obtain a privilege on all the money of the employer. In the event of bankruptcy or liquidation of the employer, the said amount shall be recorded as priority debts and the worker shall be paid an amount equivalent to one month's remuneration before any other expense, 
including judicial expenses and bankruptcy or liquidation expenses. Article 20. The employer or the worker may not perform any act that would abuse the provisions of this law or the decisions and regulations issued in implementation of his provisions. Neither of them shall carry out any act which would put pressure on the freedom of the other or the freedom of workers or other employers to achieve any interest or point of view which is adopted in contravention of the freedom of work or the competence of the competent authority to settle disputes. Article 21. The minister shall, in order to implement the provisions of this law, coordinate with the relevant authorities whenever necessary. By the end of this video, you should have increased your knowledge of labor law by now, and I hope I explained it to you by the right way. If you have any questions or inquiries, please write to me in the comments, and do not forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell button, so that you will receive all notifications when I publish the next video. Thank you all, and see you soon.